So the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene does lots of programmes um, to tackle the neglected tropical diseases. Our aim is to try and save lives, eradicate disease, improve equity, improve access to health. And we do that in a number of ways. There are three main channels. We try and improve the careers of our members. We're a membership society, also a charity, but we have members that work in all fields of tropical medicine. So we try and help them with their careers. That might be through mentoring, through training, through showcasing their work, encouraging them to publish their work. The second way we do that is we bring their knowledge together. We try and use that to make change. That might be policy change. It might be about identifying research gaps and getting that carried out. It might be around funding gaps as well. And then the third way we do that is we bring together our own expertise and that of our networks and partners to also try and affect change. So in the same way, through policy, through research, through funding, we try and move along those, um, those areas to try and achieve one of the big goals around saving lives, stopping disease, making access easier or equitable access easier. Um, in terms of what we do day to day, we do lots of different activities. We run events and uh, meetings across the world for our members and for others on all sorts of different topics within the field of tropical medicine and also global health. We publish two scientific journals where we publish the latest research across again the spectrum of infectious and non-infectious disease. We give out small grants every year up to £5,000 for early career researchers to try and get an initial idea off the ground. So it's seed funding those big grants that they can get to hopefully later in their careers and we're encouraging here today people to, to look at that for snake bite and for other um, venomous diseases that might be able to be helped through those small grants. We award success in the sector through providing medals and awards. So we have many medals going back to 1907 when we first started as an organisation. And then finally we look at policy work. We try and really bring change to the sector. We're independent of government and of any other sector really, of NGOs, of the, of the private sector. And so it puts us in a niche position to galvanise support from lots of different groups and stakeholders and try and use that to make change. I think it's really interesting. Our sector has this broad support from the NGO space implementing, operationalizing the research that we find in labs, in pure science. And the industry has an important role. It's, as you know, um, the industry is giving out lots of um, drugs for certain NTDs through mass drug administration. It's the perfect environment to see those, those sectors come together. We need NGOs because they're at the cutting edge often of, of those operational projects. They can see on the ground how something is working and how it isn't. And they can really inform how we better um, think about doing research. So there's a great opportunity in our sector to think about the synergies between NGOs and the private sector. The NGO sector brings us great insight into implementing projects within the field of neglected tropical diseases. How do we reach those vulnerable communities, hard to reach communities, for example those with mental health issues or, or disabilities. And their learnings are really important. We need to make sure we encourage the sector to publish its work and to think about how it can speak out and inform policy change, as many of them do. For the private sector, obviously they're um, behind lots of the mass drug administration in our sector, um, solving lots of the neglected tropical disease areas, particularly in schools. We need their expertise to understand the outputs of those projects. How do we help make sure those particular programmes are also reaching vulnerable groups, the elderly, for example, and adults, those that are more or less able to access the programmes. So working together is the best of both worlds. And we encourage both of them to be involved in the society, to publish their research, to think about ideas that we can use to take forward, and to work with us so that our knowledge about global health and tropical medicine is incorporating the academic sector, clinicians, also NGOs and industry.